I'm so Hollywood, lights, camera, action, shit. You know the cameras flashing when I'm passing. Welcome to the Highlight Reel. I am your host, Lester Green. And I'm Nas Panky. Absolutely. And we have an incredible guest here today. Her name is Lorna Rainey. She is a producer, filmmaker, author, and a talent manager. You don't want to miss this interview. She has a lot to say, and she's going to be sharing a lot of knowledge. Lorna Rainey, welcome to the Highlight Reel. I am your host, of course, and this is my co-host, Nas Panky. Welcome to the show. We really appreciate your time. Thank Welcome. you so much for inviting me. This is this is an honor, and it was such a surprise. It came at me from left field, uh, from a referral, from a friend of a friend, and that's how things happen. So thank you for letting me come on. Hey, Lester. Hey, Nas. Nice meeting hey. you both. Hey. Thank, uh, thank you. Thank you. And thank <laughs> you to Laura Chapanis for making the connection. That's so, her. <laughs> yeah. So let's get right into it. You are a talent manager. And you graduated from Queens College, correct? Queens College, yes. I went to Queens, Queens College. College. I didn't actually graduate. It's kind of like, what? Yeah, not okay. really graduated. But no, we can talk about that. It's I'm not I'm not ashamed of it. It's it's just one of those things that happen. But yeah. yes, I am a talent manager. Um, I own my own company. It's called the Talent Express. We represent talent across the board, from voiceover artists to spokespersons to models and actors and actresses a few children not a lot um and and you know we even have a screenwriter or two that's with us oh but, really you know, our roster is oh. amazing um we represent a couple of people that you you know may have heard of i know you probably know snoop from the wire um what? That's one of our clients. Yeah, she's actually right now. We can't talk about it too much because there's an NDA in effect, and you know about those NDAs. Right, right. But she's right now uh, shooting um, the second episode um, as a recurring guest star on a new television episodic. So, wow. Yeah, it's going to be pretty cool. Yes. Yeah. So what, what do you look for in your talent? Is there a specific quality that you try to find? I think for me, the first thing is likability and mm -hmm. personality mm -hmm. um, and being a self-starter because there are so many people out there. First of all, they think who they are even before they've done anything. So for me, that's a red flag. I, don't, I can't deal with that type of person because I'm gonna be introducing you to casting directors that I've had relationships with for years and years and years. And if I don't like you, they probably won't like you either. Mm. So that's kind of my, you know, methodology that I use when I'm selecting new talent. Mm -hmm. um, it's also about how they pitch to us. A lot of times they pitch in a really nice way and you you feel something from them, you know, mm -hmm. and you go, I think I'd like to discuss, you know, a little bit more with this person. I'd like to, to investigate a little bit more and see what they're really all about because there's so much talent out there and it breaks my heart so many times because there's so many people that I would love to represent, but as a manager, I have to try to keep each category a little bit on the manageable smaller side so that I never lose track of who they are. That's what makes managers different from agents. We invest a lot of time in you. We take time getting to know you. We want to know about your family, your past, mm. what you're doing, where you want to go and how you feel that you want to get there because it's a team effort. It's not just we sign somebody and then they sit at home and put their feet up and eat bonbons all day. Mm -hmm. No, when you get signed, that's when the work actually begins. So I look for that also, that self-determination and that drive and that passion for the industry. You have to have a passion for it yeah. because it's not kind to you every day. There'll be days when it's great and you're, you know, you're dancing for joy. Then there's going to be other days where you have to sit back and reflect and say, what more should I be doing? Why didn't I book that role? Was it me or was it just I wasn't right for it? So you never really should take it personally. If you know you're, if you're prepped and you're doing your job, your pitch package is good, um, your pictures are great, you look like your headshot, which is also one of the things that we talk about a lot, then probably 
it wasn't you. You just weren't right for that particular job. And I've had it happen before where casting directors have had somebody come in and they weren't right for that job. But then next thing you know, they email me, hey, remember you sent in so-and-so for this one? We didn't like them for that, but we'd love to read them for this. And then next thing you know, they may book that role. And I've had people who were so great when the casting directors saw them and the producers saw their tape, they were like, we don't even have a role in here for this person, but we're gonna write something in. Wow. And that's happened too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that yes. is happening. Yes, I, I always say your attitude equals your altitude. So you can be a very, very talented, gifted artist, actress, I don't care, performer, who you are. Um, but you need to know how to treat people. That's very important because if you're a person that's difficult, no matter how good you are, nobody wants to deal with that. And that's pretty much what I heard you say in a nutshell, you know. That's exactly it. I'm yes. not. It's not. <laughs> yeah. You know, because yes. that person is going to be the first person that stabs you in the back as soon as they get some success. Mm. Yes. And that's what you have to look at too. It's like, there, you can feel that there's no loyalty, that they just want to use you to get where they want to go. And then mm -hmm. after that, it's like, Bye. Okay. so, you know, we're on the lookout for that a lot of times too. Mm -hmm. and I want to help somebody who's going to be grateful and appreciative and, yes. and work hard and, you know, have that, that spirit, that positive vibe, you know, that's so important. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. Yes, thank you. Thank you for sharing that because there's going to be so many actors and artists that watch our interview. And I mean, it's really important. You are a veteran in this business. You've dealt with so many clients. You're, you're seasoned. And it's so important that they understand, yes, you can be talented, but you must have the right attitude as well and, and gratefulness because I always say, Whatever I have, you know, I'm a screenwriter, I've won awards, I've placed, you know, I'm, I, I've done so many things. I, I really don't talk much about it because whatever I have, I say, God gave it to me. There's nothing, I am not the way that I am because I'm the way that I am. I'm the way I am because God blessed me to be the way that I am. Whatever gifts that I have, it comes from God. So it's important for us to be humble and to always be grateful. So thank you for sharing that with us. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. yes. And so you super talented people are sitting at home wondering why their phone's not ringing. That's yes, why. that's why, that's why, that's mm. right. So you are the author of a book called Native Intelligence. And that title, I want you to give us a little bit of information about the title, Native Intelligence, and how you came up with the title. Well, well <laughs> same question. Yeah. It's, a, it's an easy one, although uh, I, my ancestry, I'm tri-racial. So I'm also Native American. So when I say Native intelligence, I'm speaking about Native people and, and how we tend to think about the world and things that we may encounter along the way, how we incorporate that into our lifestyle. And um, that's really how I came up with the title because the book itself deals with... Uh, a native woman, she's Choctaw as am I. So um, she kind of comes upon a situation where she uses her native intelligence to understand what's actually going on. And, and it, it's an exciting book. It was one I wrote a long time ago and people have asked me over the years to write a sequel, but of course I'm busy. So I haven't really gotten to complete the sequel, but it's about half to two thirds finished. So hopefully okay. I'll find a moment here and there to drop a few lines on page and get it done. At some where, can, where can we find your book? Because I would love to read, read your book. Well, thank you. Um, you know, I look back on it now and I realize it's not my greatest work. You know, I guess it's like an actor when they're first starting out and they, they do, you know, a little scene and they're, they're someplace. And then later on, like five years from that time, they look back and go, ooh, I could have done that a little bit differently. That's how I feel about Native Intelligence, but it's available. Um, it's on Amazon.com okay. for sure. You can okay. find it there. Thank I, you. It was on Barnes and Noble. You might still be able to find it there. I'm not sure. Okay. But you can find it for sure. Okay. <laughs> Thank right. you. Sure. So, Ms. Rainey, during this pandemic, people are at home and watching a lot of TV, maybe watching a lot of movies. I saw that you have 
Purple Rain as maybe one of your favorite movies. Was there something about Prince that just resonated with you? Because I share the same birthday as him, June 7th. Uh-huh. So is it a Gemini thing? What was it about Prince or his music that really just touched you in some way? I think what it was, was, you know, there's some, there's some artists that you're with them from the beginning of their journey. And I remember him when he burst on the scene and he was just so innovative and so different and so creative and, and just so like, this is me, this is my music, this is what I do. And if you don't like it, it's okay, but I still love what I'm doing. And you know, I, I'd appreciate it if you like it too, sort of thing. And I think that, that, really just, that really just got me. I'm like, that's how people should be. You have yeah. to be true to yourself, true to your, your gifts. And you should always try to use everything that the great spirit has given you to its utmost potential, whatever mm. that may be. I look at, at gifts from the great spirit, like presents under, if you celebrate <laughs> under the Christmas tree. Right. right? There's going to be many presents under that tree, all given to you by different people. But you open them. And you need to appreciate each one of them and use each one of them. You don't just use one gift from someone and the rest are sitting in the corner, you know? Mm -hmm. So to me, it's the same thing. The great spirit gives us many gifts and he intends for us to use and enjoy them all. So that's what living to your fullest potential is. And that's what I saw from Prince. And that's why I really admired him because he didn't just play one instrument. How many instruments did he play, Lester? Like five, Most, six. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, really, really well. He wasn't singing for a while, but then we found out he could sing too. So then mm-hmm. now he's singing. We we found out so much about him and not only did he write music for himself, but he enjoyed writing music and sharing it yes. with other people for mm-hmm. them to make money. He made the career of so many people. He did. So he did. I think, I think um, there was, uh, I think they had asked Eric Clapton how it felt to be the greatest guitarist in the world. He said, I don't know. You have to ask Prince. Oh. Wow. So, yeah. Wow, he was, that's he was at the top of his game. I don't know if you've ever seen or watched the induction, his induction into the um, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, where he mm-hmm. plays While My Guitar Gently Sleeps. No, that I is, didn't do that. So, you have, you mm-hmm. must. That okay. is like, it gets me up almost every morning. If there's any time that I need to just like feel something deep inside, I'll play that while my guitar gently sweep, sleeps. Um, Eric Clapton is there. Um, George Harrison's son is there on guitar as well. They had like a full complement of some of the greatest musicians in rock and roll. Wow. And he just wow. took it away. Amazing. Wow. I'll check that out. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So can you tell us about your great grandfather, the Honorable Joseph Hain Rainey, and how he made history? Well, um, Joseph Hain Rainey was born a slave in 1832 on a rice plantation in South Carolina. 38 years later, he was sworn in on December 12, 1870, as the very first Black congressman. Um, I think that, thank you. Um, His story is so incredible. And it's one that's inspired me my whole entire life. From the time I was three years old, my great aunt, his daughter would put me on her knee and tell me the stories of her father. And then she would always end up by patting me on the head and kissing me on the cheek and saying, Lorna, you're going to be the one to tell what your grandfather, your great grandfather did. You're going to be the one to make the world aware of what a great man he was and his accomplishments. That for me is how we should inspire our children. We should never just give them like some little, little something to do. We should lay on them their greatness and Mm -hmm. inspire them to live up to their greatness. Mm -hmm. So from the time I was three years old, this was on my shoulders, that this was something that I was going to have to do. So all through my life, no matter what else happened, I always had my eye on this particular goal, that this was what I needed to do. So recently we did um, 
a 13 minutes um, tribute video for him on his 150th anniversary of his seating in Congress. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm writing a children's book called Slave in the House. Again, we want to push that toward our young generation and inspire them to continue to move on. Nothing is impossible. You don't allow other people to stop you mm -hmm. and you don't ever use excuses. Don't mm -hmm. excuse yourself from not living up to your potential. There's always going to be people who want to stop you, but wow. they go on with their lives and then you're left with what? Nothing because you let someone else. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. You never allow somebody else to stop you from doing what you you should be doing. So his story was that he, in Congress, was outspoken, eloquent, and probably the envy of all his colleagues because he was such a firebrand. Mm -hmm. He was a political trailblazer. And he was, as Congressman Gregory Meek said, unstoppable. Mm -hmm. um, so unstoppable that the KKK was after him and was threatening him and he had to get uh, protection and actually move from his home state to a different state mm -hmm. in order that he and his children and wife would be safe. Um, but he, again, didn't let that stop him from speaking out. He continued to do what he needed to do. Um, so he spoke out on behalf of all the downtrodden. He spoke out on behalf of Native Americans, on behalf of the Chinese railway workers, on behalf of the freedmen, and on behalf of anyone else that he found. Oh, and of course, social justice, because he would use himself as a guinea pig. He would go into places that he knew weren't gonna serve him, but he was very fair. So he was able to actually go into these places and maybe take a seat until they finally came and looked really careful and they're like, hey, 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 wait a minute. You're not white, you don't belong in here. Mm -hmm. And he was the one who did the first publicly recognized sit-in. He went into a, a very upscale hotel. He went into their dining room. He took a seat. Wow. He ordered his meal. And I guess at that point, they were like, wait, 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 wait a minute. So then they came and they said, we're not going to serve you because we don't serve Negroes mm. here. Mm. So he said, um, I'm not leaving. So you will either serve me or you will have to throw me out. So he sat there and they didn't know what to do at that point. So they finally went and they got security after a while and they did throw him out. Um, but he was able again to prove a point. There is no equal service under the law and there should be. Everybody should be able, I have money, right? Mm -hmm. I look the part, I'm dressed well. My manners are impeccable. Why can't I be served? So, you know, that was one of the things that he did. And as I said, he was the first one to do a, a public sit-in um, for service. Wow. You ever thought about producing that story? I think it would make a great documentary. Yes. I thought you guys knew that already. Yes, we are in the middle of producing the documentary about him. And it's oh. called Slave in the oh. House. Thank you. Oh, I, I yeah. didn't know that. Awesome. No. Yeah. yeah, we are. Um, and Slave in the House, uh, we, we picked that title because he was born a slave, but yet yes. he ascended to the House of Representatives. So we felt what? it was like the perfect, perfect title. So that's what it's called. And um, we are starting production on that. We've already done so much re research. He wow. actually, he and five other um, Black men who had, you know, some monies actually pulled their resources to start the first Black freight service, which was called Enterprise Railroad. So he act was a part of that as well. I mean, the more I learn about him, I thought I knew. Yeah. But research, I'm learning even more and more and more. Um, they just passed a resolution this past week in the, in the House, which is going to the Senate now, to name a room in the Capitol building after him. It's room H-150, now to be called the Joseph H. Rainey Room. Um, wow. They're naming a post office in Georgetown after him because that was one of the, the cities that he um, stayed in. A period of time. 
So that is named after him. It's going to be named after him too. So. Wow. There's wonderful things happening. And um, So when I went to Queens College, Miss Rainey, I worked under somebody who worked for Newsday. So I, I saw that you were interviewed by Newsday. Can you talk to us about that and some of the notifications or publications that interviewed you? Can you talk to us about that? Sure. Um, I was recently interviewed by New York Newsday. They did a full page featured article. I was, I was shocked when I saw it. Um, they sent a photographer over um, and then I had an interview with their journalist and it was just really a very in-depth and uh, informative article. And I got so many calls and emails about it, but they did a splendid job, really. And there's a video that goes with it. So if anybody wants to, they can go to you know, newsday.com and you wow. can see the article and see the video. So it was really good. That's big, that's big. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Newsday? Yeah, that's huge. So I heard that you were in the Smithsonian Magazine, is that correct? Or do you want to? I know no. you want to brag, but please indulge us. <laughs> you know what? All of this for me is just so much of what I empathically knew was going to happen. I don't know if my aunt spoke it into reality or whether she was also an empath, that's possible. But for her to have told me that I was going to be doing all this from you know, years and years and years ago when I was a little girl, um, it's never left my mind. Consequently, it's not that much of a surprise to me. It's just, this is the right time for this to yeah. all happen. So I was just driving along one day and I got a phone call out of the blue from this man. And then he's just asking me, are you Lorna Rainey? And I said, um, yes, I am. Um, and then he said uh, who he was. He said where he was from. And he said, I would love to connect you with my boss, who's an associate history, um, associate professor of history at South Carolina University. And he's writing a piece for the Smithsonian Magazine about Joseph Hain Rainey, and they would like to interview you. And that's how that happened. I, you know, I would say, how odd? But that's not in my nature. I'm not saying how odd because this was the progress. progress. This was my journey. Yes. This was where I was supposed to wind up. I did not know how it was going to happen, but I always give all the faith to the great spirit and know that he's going to put the right people in my path at the right time and things will just happen. And so that's how, that's how it came about. Wow. So it's going to be maybe by the time your program airs, but it will have been in the January issue of the Smithsonian Magazine. And of course, you'll be also able to find it online on their website. That is an incredible accomplishment. Legacy, yeah, you are incredible. leaving a legacy. I'm doing the best I can, sir. Congratulations, <laughs> wow. Thank you. Congratulations, yeah. thanks for sharing that with us. Yeah. Thank Absolutely. you. Yeah. Yeah, information 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 i feel yes. like we live in the land of just information and mm -hmm. technology and i wanted to ask you about this quote that i found on your social media page what do the words have knowledge will share mean to you is that your quote or is that somebody that you quoted no that's my quote and um i chose that as as my quote because I remember growing up and, and, and trying so hard to find information and, you know, either it wasn't there or people who had information were not willing to divulge it to me. Um, when I was um, in the career of acting and modeling and doing voiceovers, it was very hard to get anyone to network with me and share their information with me. Yeah. Um, so as I have progressed and as I have accrued my knowledge, I want to share it. So that's what I mean. Have knowledge, will share. My lifetime of experience, I want to share that with whoever asks me. There are people who email me 
a lot of time. I don't represent them. And I actually tell them, I cannot represent you, but I'm willing to help you. What do you need? Wow. So I share wow. the information with them so that there's no reason why I wouldn't want them to be successful. Why wouldn't I, you know? And I think that's where we fail sometimes as people. We're not willing to help each other. Mm. Why not? Yes, yes. Just Mm -hmm. knowledge is power right that's right and and i'm I'm so moved by what you just said that people reach out to you and although you don't represent them you're still willing to help Mm -hmm. i meet so many people that you ask them a question they say oh inbox me you know email me call me and Mm -hmm. when you do so they don't get back to you they're just saying it because it sounds like i guess it sounds good i don't know um they don't get Sorry. No, it, it get. I was just going to say, I'm sorry. It gets you off their back for the moment and then yeah. they can move along to the thing. So that's all that is, you know. I've seen that happen to, to actors on set when they say, well, well, can I receive a copy of my work? And they'll, sure, sure, sure. And they'll, well, how can I get in touch with you? And they give them a business card. Well, go ahead and try calling that. See what happens. Mm-hmm. Nothing. Email yeah. them. See what happens. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. You know, so I've seen this happen before and it's unfortunate. And yes, I'm busy, but if I've met somebody and, you know, or somebody has heard of me or somebody has referred them to me, I try to at least answer their questions and point Mm. them in the right direction. That's all. Wow. It doesn't take much from your day. It's nothing. Mm -hmm. I love that. Thank you. I have one last question for you. So my mother's name was Lorna. She passed away from diabetes. Her name was Lorna Imelda Green. And I wanted to ask you about your first name. Is there a significance behind it? Were you named after somebody? Because you know how sometimes names have a certain meaning or they come from somewhere. Mm -hmm. Did your first name come from somewhere? It just reminds me of my mother's. Um, So that's so nice. Um, I will. That's another reason that I'll try to carry it proudly for your mom too. Um, Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Um, my dad named me. I don't know why he picked Lorna. He just happened to pick that name. So he named me. I think my mom named me my middle name. And then my dad, of course, gave me my last name, too. So he, he got two out of three. <laughs> <laughs> Even though it. she did all the work, he got yeah. two out of three. <laughs> yeah. You know, my mother used to always joke that her favorite cookie, and it's my favorite cookie, too, is the Lorna Doom cookies. Have you ever tried them? Oh yeah! Oh my! That's goodness. everyone's favorite cookie. <laughs> what? Those shortbread? Yes. Not amazing. too. Not too many though, because they're buttery <laughs> shortbread. Oh, it's oh my! Mm-hmm. Yeah, not too much, but yeah. they are very good. They are very good. Yeah. But yeah. listen, we don't want to keep you much longer. We really appreciate your just being here on the highlight reel. Thank Absolutely. you. My pleasure. It was thank it was a you joy. so much. So, yes. yes. Uh, what what can how can people find you uh, or social media? What can they look forward to in twenty twenty one from you? Oh well, um, we are ramping up um, full full bore on the documentary Slave in the House, so you could definitely look for that. Um, we have a a well the page is not up; it's saved um, the website for Slave in the House. But you can also look on my rainyfilmandmedia.com website. I post stuff up there as it uh, as it becomes available. Okay. Um, there, there's just going to be so much. And then I just finished a film, which I'm sure you, your audience will be interested in. I produced a film called Silent Tribute. And in I a mean- few words, what it is, it tells the parallel stories of Black men and women, people of color, murdered by the police. And then on the, yeah, then on the other side, it tells the story of missing and murdered indigenous women across Indian country. Mm. So these two stories are inter, interwoven Why, into yeah. this, yeah, into this short film called Silent Tribute. So I'll be posting that soon because I just received the, the final edit on it last night. So they can look for that as well. Great. Is that going to be on Netflix or do you know where it'll be released? Do you know well, where it, we can? No, it's, a, it's a short film, so it, it, it only can have certain platforms. Okay. I understand that there are a few um, of those type of TV streaming services that have reached out to me about it. 
And of course, it'll be in some film festivals. It'll be on YouTube, of course. Um, it will be again on rainyfilmandmedia.com. It'll be on Facebook. People can find me easily on Facebook. I'm all over Facebook. Yeah, so. you are. You are big <laughs> yes, on social wonderful. media. I saw that. Because <laughs> I was you. like, she is on there posing with your daughter. I was Aww. like, yeah, she's on there. <laughs> she is on there. <laughs> yeah. I tr well, you know, when you're in my business, you have to maintain, you know, a really big media presence. Because I'm in media, so people expect to be able to find me on media. We also have a, a great website called www.thetalentexpress.com. So you can find out a lot about the company on there. You can see the people that we represent. You can see some of the things that they've done. We're all over. Just You're wonderful. all over. Wonderful. And you're taking over, moving into 2021. I'm trying to. Yes. Trying to you know, I want to be, you know, as it is. I think, I'm not certain, but I think we are, the Talent Express, the most successful um, female minority owned um, management company. Um, I don't think there's anybody else that's, that's higher than wow. us. Our IMDBs, are, if you know what IMDBs are, you can yeah. both to always under a thousand. And that's a global ranking. So I'm always oh, so thrilled. But you know, hard work pays off. That's right. You gotta work hard. You can't sit on the back burner and think, well, I wish I was and I could have been and I should have been. If you're not working toward it, you won't be. So yes. you might as well start to put the work in and really push forward. So yeah. Well, Absolutely. Lorna, I can see why you are successful and your company is successful because you are just naturally a motivational speaker. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Just what you say, it, it, it resonates and, it, and you build up, you build people up. So. Right. I just, I just want to thank you so much for being on our show. I am encouraged and inspired by you. I'm looking That's forward good. to everything that you have coming forward in 2021. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. And I'm just congratulations for, uh, for your great grandfather making history, uh, having his own room in the White House. That is so awesome. Well, a room named after him in the White House. Yeah, in the Capitol building. Yeah, in, the, in the Capitol. Okay, that is just amazing amazing congratulations and thank you thank for you. being on our show the highlight reel thank, thank you so much so much naz and lester i wish you both all kinds of success may all your hard work pay off and oh. um continue success with the highlight reel definitely thank you, thank you. Thank you so and, much and many thanks to laura Chapanis for making the connection for introducing us yes. to you thank you yes thank, thank you. you okay right. stay safe Bye, you too. Bye. Today, we salute Michael B. Jordan. You know what it is. I think it's a beautiful thing to see a son and his mother just bond. Oscar's 2019. Their connection is Michael B. Jordan is a great actor, but I just see him as an even better human being. I love everything that he represents. I think he is a great ambassador for people to follow and for people to look up to. I grew up a mama's boy. My mom passed away. And so I have a very soft spot when it comes to mothers. So Michael B. Jordan, I salute you and your wonderful mother. Talking about salute. You played, and you said, yeah, my mom's already seen me die five times. Yeah, 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 I can't do that to her anymore. You don't forget, you just, I guess you don't pay attention to it at first. Like, like my mom is, is watching her son die over and over and over again, like dramatic, dramatic death. My mom would cry really hard. Like she would take it, my mom was very emotional. She would, she would take it really hard. And you know, after Fruitville, she saw the screening of it and she was texting me that night, and oh man, this text, I, it was like maybe three o'clock in the morning, and I just woke up to the text, and she was like, uh, um, Bakari, because my middle name, Bakari's like, Bakari, don't leave me, you know, I'm like, I just, I miss you, and all this other stuff, and I, like, just don't leave me, and I'm like, I had to, I had to call her, like, mom, listen, 
you're not allowed to watch any more of my movies if you can't hold it together. I need you to hold it together. Like, I just had to talk her down. Like, you know, like, Ma, you know, I love you and like, don't, don't worry about my. Thank you for joining us on the Highlight Reel. I'm your host, Nas Panky. And I'm Lester Green. Catch us every Friday evening, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Until then, peace, love, and popcorn. And popcorn.